my mindset is if I focus on the content creating because I want to get followers or I want to get views, that's not rewarding for me. What's rewarding for me is if I can post content, if, if one person or two people is going to find value out of that, then bro, that's all that matters. That's my whole reason why. So obviously if the followers and the views come, that's cool. Like that's a bonus. But like people can like change their whole lifestyle because well, they saw one of my videos, bro, then that's, I've succeeded. <laughs> Manifest Podcast. Alrighty, uh, <laughs> another potty. Got a uh, Josh Naveo on Cookie Follow. My <laughs> boys. <laughs> hey Bimbo. Yeah, pretty good, eh? Just um, yeah, living life. You just got back from working out west as well. Yeah, yeah. Just started um, a new job out near Roma, out on the gas fields there. Yep. Um, yeah, I just finished three weeks. So yeah, now it's good, eh? Good experience. Um, sort of new to it, eh? So I sort of just started the whole industry work this year so it's been good just been learning heaps and yeah good crew out there too so the culture's real good so yeah that's, what are you what are you bro. doing um so pretty much working out at gasfield wells and there's like a process called fracking i don't know if you heard of fracking before no, no so way. pretty much going into it it's pretty much our job it's called like a fluid management operator so it's like an operator job and like pretty much what they do is they pump a whole heap of sand water salt into these big iron pipes into these big wells and it gets pumped into the ground then it pretty much like creates all these cracks and se seams in the ground and then that's how the gas gets released oh true and then that gas from roma gets sent to um, curtis island yep yep yeah, yeah. so what's that qc is that what you're on or santos santos yep. yeah yeah santos. Yeah. So, yeah fuck yeah bro that's dope yeah no. so what, what were you doing before that you're doing teaching uh i was a youth worker so okay. I was working here yeah, for four and a half years. I was working at a school called Trinity Education. I don't know if you've ever heard of Yeah, Trinity. we've done yeah. work there, bro. We yeah, moved yeah, that arm, sweet. building the Trinity. Yeah, so um, yeah, Trinity is a SAS school, so it's special assistance. And people get confused sometimes. They think special assistance is that like disability. But it's majority, majority, majority more like um, you're working with kids that have like trauma, so trauma-based backgrounds and history and stuff. So yep. a lot of them have like real rough, child like you know home lives and it's like juvenile sort of thing eh? yeah a little yeah bit. yeah like obviously we we've gotten students who have been to juvie and you know have had run-ins with the law and stuff but it's more with you know young people who just can't cope in mainstream schooling yep. so a lot of them obviously have been disengaged from mainstream schooling because obviously yeah they're getting in trouble you know majority is because of behavior yep. but also we've we've gotten like some kids who just they have you know anxiety they have depression you know they they can't cope with the big social settings that a mainstream school has so our school oh, at Trinity is a much smaller school setting and it's much smaller classes so the max students that you get at that school is probably 120 and oh, true. classroom yeah, is right probably only like 10 to 15 kids per class so it's a much smaller yeah. school setting it is in a control too yeah in situations yeah so yeah it has its challenges but as a youth worker it's you're sort of like a like a chaplain sort of role yep. you would have had like school chaplains and did you have school chaplains? Well, oh we, we went to chanel so like i went to a catholic school so we didn't yeah. really have chapos yeah, yeah. i hear about them at public schools yeah yeah so they have them a fair bit at um like your your state schools yep. pretty much they're just there to support kids um for like social and emotional well-being support sort of thing yep um obviously help with their their learning as well but m yeah most of the time you sort of help them just engage back into school because a lot of them just just hate school yeah <laughs> a lot of kids you know they don't really want to bar of school anymore so you're sort of just trying to help those young people you know succeed in school and then obviously in the future and life and stuff so that was sort of my role as a youth worker being at the school there at Carinity and um no, I really enjoyed it, eh? Like, I found uh, it was very rewarding, um, especially a lot of the kids are misunderstood, you know? A lot of them get labelled as, at a mainstream school, you know, as the naughty kid or the kid that just gets, um, you know, suspended all the time or just gets expelled, you know? They're real, just labelled as, you know, the, the outcast. Yep. So I guess, like, um, yeah, and it's, it's harder at a mainstream school because... You know, teachers can only do so much, you know, they've got they've got a class full of like twenty to thirty kids and it's hard to, you know, take the time to sort of, you know, invest in those kids who need the extra help. So I guess at our school it was easier for us 
for the teachers and the youth workers to support those kids who need that extra support with their schooling or with their, you know, social and emotional well-being. We could actually sort of work on the individual rather than just the class, the whole class in general sort of thing. So, um, so yeah, that was sort of what I did. Yeah, that's awesome, bro. Like you said, like, that sounds the outsiders, but, like, a lot of those kids, you know, they're not as fortunate with the families they come from and mm. the morals that their families have. So that's all they really know is their ways yeah. and obviously people and they do it because they want to be seen as well so yeah like, yes yeah yep. so it's a great thing to put them in a small s- school so then they yep. are seen yeah and then yeah that yep. all that's what all i get from it all but yeah 100 percent, bro so you, you're kiwi bro kiwi background yeah yeah so <laughs> pretty much yeah born in new zealand auckland new zealand south auckland um manirewa people might not know where that is but south auckland's like uh, how do i how do i explain it so you use no Brizzy, eh? Yeah. So yeah, South bro. Auckland's like the Logan of Auckland. Oh, uh, okay. So all the Islanders, <laughs> like the Maldives, and like sort of the rough area. But, uh, you know, South Auckland's home to me, so I'll, I'll never see it as like a negative, you know, sort of place. But, yep. you know, it's the rough neighbourhood. It's been classed as the rough neighbourhood. So yep. that's where I grew up, old in South Auckland. Yep. Um, so I lived there pretty much most of my childhood life. And then when I was about... 11, so like halfway through year six. So I did all my primary, most of my primary schooling in New Zealand. And um, we moved a lot in Auckland. So when someone said, asked me, they're like, oh, where are you from in Auckland? Like, I'm from Manirewa. But, man, we moved from suburb to suburb. We, yeah, okay. I, I, yeah. I went to like six schools. Oh, like wow. Primary oh, schools, eh? Like true. six primary schools in New Zealand. And then obviously more schools when I moved over to Oz. But, um, mm. what, why is that, bro? Why yeah. are you moving so much? Oh, uh, I don't know, why. Eh? <laughs> Ask my mum. <laughs> like, yeah, we just always just moved around. And I think mum just got different because she was a teacher. Oh, and, okay. Um, yep. And she was big with her netball as well. So she was like a coach and a teacher at the same time. So I think when she just got different gigs, yeah. um, we would sometimes move. Um, but yeah, so I went to different schools and stuff. Yep. Back in Auckland. And then, um, yeah, did most of my primary schooling in, in Auckland. And then um, when I was 10 or 11, um, so I grew up with a single mother most of the times. So my mum and dad, they were sort of split, like they are on and off now and again. But mum was, you know, majority of the time looking after me and my siblings. How many are there? There's three of you. You're the oldest. Yeah, three, yeah. yep. So you got oh, Eli, okay. Eli and Caleb. There was more. Oh, you got a younger sister again? Is there four of you? So, yeah, there's four. Four. Oh, oh, okay, okay, four yep. Three siblings. So there's four of us all up. But I've yeah, got um, gotcha. yep. a few cousins that used to live here and we're oh, pretty okay. much pretty close. Like yep. they're yeah, okay. classes, you know brothers and sisters as well but yeah i got eli so he lives in brizzy yep. dj elux <laughs> <laughs> uh caleb so you know caleb through work and stuff so yeah he played lives here with him played footy with caleb yeah and then my sister anya and she just graduated last year um and yeah so yeah uh, that's out that's my siblings there oh there we go yeah so we're all a bit you know older now so we're all sort of finished school yep um yeah. You're, um, you're 27 yourself, bro. 27. Fresh yeah. 27. Yeah, just turned 27 <laughs> last last Monday. Yeah, getting on now on the on the back end of the 20s now. <laughs> That's the thing, bro. Eh? <laughs> like we're like like I'm still only 20, bro. Eh? Yeah. But like everyone says, like it just happens like that, man. Next minute you're 30, right. then you're 40, and you're like, what the fuck? I happening? swear, I just turned 25 like yesterday, and now yeah, yeah just yeah, time That's what just I'm goes s- quick. Scared of, bro. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah. So, um, obviously. Yeah, going back to, um, like, my schooling in New Zealand. Um, so when I was about 11 years old, um, my mum sent me to go live with my auntie and uncle in, in Perth. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All, so, all yeah, four right. of you or just uh, Just me, just me. So That's I was true. the eldest. <laughs> so, like, I don't know, like, I didn't think I had, like, you know, anger issues back when I was, like, a kid. <laughs> but apparently my mum reckons, no, nah, you need a father figure. So, um, and, like, it wasn't, like, a angry or bad kid but i guess i used to just get a bit cheeky to mum like answer back and so she would tell me what to do sometimes i'd be like nah i don't want to do that like i you know see I mean? like, like kiwi kiwi mums too kiwi eh? mums like maui scary. and all that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so i guess wasn't listening so mum's like nah you need a father figure in your life so she sent me she said she asked her sister which is my auntie jane and she's like you all have that like one auntie that's just like that strict auntie sort of thing like yeah the one that just you know is like puts everyone in line and so she sent me away to go live with my auntie jane and my uncle thomas and um in, in wa in perth and um and yeah i lived in perth for about three years eh? so i did year six seven and eight 
in, in WA. Fair, bro. Yeah, yeah. What, just no, like, didn't see your brothers and sisters? Just Oh, I like, went back to New Zealand every Christmas. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> Still, yeah, that's yeah, a long yeah, time, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. It was weird. Like, it was a weird time in my life, but honestly... When I was there, I loved it. Eh? I love Perth. Like, bro, per- I want to go to Perth best, so apparently. bad. Yeah. Bro, yeah. Honestly, it's um, I want to move back there eventually. Like to live, eh? it's so nice. It's and you like, can probably do that for work too, bro. Now yeah. you get into that gas field type yeah. work. And there's a few like boys here who are pretty who have gone over, eh? and they said they like the lifestyle in Perth. And um, obviously, I haven't been there for a while, but yeah, I've always loved to go back to Perth. It's just yeah, like you said, like the West Coast. It's different, eh? It's just, I, think, oh. I think it's so nice too because it's so untouched, a lot of it. Yeah. It's such a low population over there, yeah. bro. The beaches are, yeah, just super nice. Unreal, bro. The sand's Unreal. just white and blue water and, yeah, it's, it's In really summer, nice. it's hot and in winter, it's freezing. Like, yeah. It's like just perfect. Yeah, I didn't realise how cold Perth was, eh? Like, yeah. per- like when you think about Perth, it's like down like near Melbourne type shit. Yeah. So it gets fucking cold there, bro. Yeah. How, yeah, how cold does it get? He came from New Zealand, so he's fine. Yeah, that. actually, <laughs> fair. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, obviously, yeah. Coming from New Zealand, I didn't think it was that cold. I just knew it was, it was hot. It was like another level of, of hot when I moved over. <laughs> yeah. but it's, a, it's a different heat compared to Queensland. Like in in, a, in Perth, it's a dry heat, so yep. it gets to like 40, 42 degrees, but it's not like Ooh. that humid. Yeah, you know, it's just yeah. like that's yeah on point there, bro. Yeah, hundred. Yeah. I'd rather that dry heat than just. Over hum- here, like you're just sweating your bum off all the time, mate. Eh? Like, yeah, you just step outside and you're just already sweating. Especially when there's like just a storm come over and then it's straight back sunshine. Like, oh. that's that's when criminal. you're working and you're like, yes, it's raining. Like, and then you're like, oh, wait, it's raining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what's coming after. Yep, yeah. Yep. Especially if it's a quickie, eh? you're just yeah. like, fuck, it's gonna be <laughs> so shit here. So, so, yeah, so I lived in Perth for three years, played rugby, um, rugby union those three years in Perth and yeah like I said bro Perth's so nice I made some good mates over there still keep in contact with them so that's good um and then um when I was about the end of year eight um I moved back to New Zealand to live with my mum and my new stepdad so my mum ended up remarrying and um she um got some married to my stepdad and then um so I moved back with them and um I lived in New Zealand for one year so I did one year of high school in New Zealand that was year nine and um, went to a school called Alfriston College. And um, that was a weird year of school for me. Eh? It was like, I didn't really care about school. I was just trying to be cool. You know, like, <laughs> you know how like when you're year nine, year 10, you just don't really care about school. You're just like going with the motions. You're just like. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's right. the year before you have to start taking it serious. seriously. Seriously, <laughs> hey, yeah. So, yeah, year nine and 10 were sort of just the years where I was just like, oh, I don't really, it's just school, you know, just. You sort of just want to hang out with your mates, you know, play footy with your mates, and yep. you know, just you're just there for the social aspect and there because obviously you have to be at school. Yep. Um, and yeah, so obviously 2014, um, did my year of high school in New Zealand, and then um, we ended up moving to Gladstone um, in 2011, and um, that's where I, yeah, obviously moved here. Glad I've been here ever since, so it's about almost eleven years now. Wait, sorry, what was that, bro? You, was it twenty? Did you get the years messed up? Twenty fourteen, you finished in New oh, Zealand. So twenty ten, yeah. sorry. Yeah, twenty ten. Gotcha. Um, finished school. I finished school in New Zealand, but I was fourteen years old. That's why I got it mixed up. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, gotcha. yeah. So twenty ten, I, I finished school. Um, yeah, did my f- year nine in New Zealand, and then um, yeah, obviously moved over to Gladstone mm-hmm. in twenty eleven, and that's where I did uh, my year ten, and then I my first school in Gladstone was Trinity College. And that was like back where Trinity College was like yeah. really small. So there was only like, they only went up to year 10 and there was only about oh, 200, 250 kids in the school. And that was like from prep all the way to year 10. So it was a super small school. Yep. And like in my year 10 cohort, there was probably about <laughs> oh, bro, like 12 kids, like 12 <laughs> students. So it was super small. And I came from like Alfreston College and they had like 2,000 kids in the school. Oh, Holy shit. shit. Like, it was yeah, a massive a school, man. So it was like, oh, I don't know why my mum sent me. Like at the time I was thinking, well, why is my mum sending me to this small, like this is in my head, in my 15-year-old head, this, this is a dumb school. Like, why am I getting <laughs> sent to this dumb school? But then, <laughs> now I look back, hey, I, I literally – some like the friends that are in that cohort like i'm still best friends with them today yeah so it's crazy like you know when you're young you don't think you know when you're put in situations or put in things you don't realize until later yeah oh, that's no, just maturing actually, bro that's yeah. that's all it is bro 100 yeah, percent. so the year 10 there and and now i look back hey i was like i actually learned a lot at that school like i got way more support 
and I learned way more in that year of school than I did at the at the big school, you know. Oh yeah, for sure. You go state high. Um yeah, so, yeah. yeah, year eleven and twelve went to yep. state high. Um, uh yeah, state. I, I actually didn't mind state again. Like I think I was just like you said, like when you're year eleven and twelve, you sort of sort of wake up to yourself a bit. It's like yep. oh, I should probably especially try a little harder. Realize, especially if you realize you want to go to uni. Yeah. Then you notice that the people that want to go to uni. They start knuckling down, and mm. then the people that just want to go be a tradie or whatever, they just like, yeah, whatever. I'll yeah, just do these two years, pass my subjects, and yeah, just, uh, fuck it. That's me. Here. That was me to a T, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bro, my grade twelve just Netflix and fucking chill, pretty much. Eh? Yeah. Minus yeah. the chill. <laughs> Hundred. Yeah. yeah. Well, bloody. So I finished graduated. 2013. 2013. 2013. Oh, wow. Which is ages ago now. Yeah, that's Far out. Bro, that's oh, 10 years bro. ago. Yeah. <laughs> they don't remind me, man. <laughs> yeah, it's that's like a me and my ago, mates were sitting down we're like, bro, we graduated 10 years ago. It's like, shut up, man. Don't remind me. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, Fair. It's, it's and a scary it, thought, eh? It is. Like, even for us, like, what was it, 2019? Yeah. Three years th- now. Three years for, yeah, myself. Oh, yeah, even three years for me, bro. Dude, that's that's, that's mental. So. Nah, that's crazy. You just doing your peaks. You're still on your peaks, guys. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, bro. sure. Yeah. I'm aware. <laughs> yeah. I'm thriving in it. It's good, man. <laughs> Live it while you can. Yeah. Click on the fingers, you'll be 27. 27. Yeah. <laughs> you'll be 27. Yeah. But it's so weird because, like, you literally just see people back from school, you know, living their lives and, you know, getting married, having kids. It's oh, crazy bro, seeing yeah. everyone just, you know, living their lives. It's, it's cool and to see. But, the thing oh, these yeah. days is, like, like, or our parents and even like go back to our grandparents. Like they're having kids of like 20 and 19 and mm, early yeah. 20s getting yeah. married. And then like today, like your mate has a kid at 25. It's just like, holy like, shit. Holy it's like, such a mind fuck. Yeah. It's Dude. like, what is happening? Kids, right. People having like kids at 20 and you're like, what the hell? Yeah. Like, yeah. And like that, I think that's just obviously time. But I mm. think it's such a like mind fuck because how expensive it is to live now compared to what it was. Oh, yeah. yeah. So like I kind of think it's like holy fuck like that's a fucking expense like kids mm. are not cheap bro oh no. god not cheap no. I can't even pay for myself at the moment let alone yeah, <laughs> like another here. human being yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hundred yeah or look after myself yeah, yeah <laughs> pay yeah. 100%. yeah so go to school what'd you do after school bro straight away yeah. um so oh, obviously I had a job in school for a while when I was working at Kmart I was like um working at the back doing the stores sort of thing so I did that for like six months out of school and then I ended up landing a job at the hospital and um, I was a I was a wardy for like six months and then I was security for like six months at the hospital true yeah yeah so what is what does that require so wardy is pretty much oh yeah but (laughs) I didn't really to be honest (laughs) like it was like honestly the guys in hospital was pretty chill compared to some other hospitals like I don't know about now it's been a while yeah yeah as a wardy, it's like those guys that pretty much transport the patients to and from, you know, different areas of the hospital. Yep. Yep. Um, there's other jobs that are in that job as well, but that was pretty much the gist of it. Are you, like, given a selected, like, age area type thing, like the elderly or, like, the um, younger, like or is the, it just mix? Yeah, it's mixed, bro, because, like, the Glasson Hospital is pretty small. Well, it's yeah. grown a bit now, but, like, yeah, eight years ago it was pretty small. So you literally had, like, three areas – so you had obviously emergency, you had the general ward, and then you had maternity. So you'd have a wardy for the general ward and maternity, and then you'd have like an ED wardy. Yep. So you pretty much you'd only have like three wardies on shift, whereas like bigger yeah, hospitals okay. like Rocky, you might have like ten or twelve. Or yeah, yeah, bigger yep. hospitals. So. Yep. Yeah, hundred. See, yep. I didn't even know that was job A. Eh? Yeah, like well, I, I didn't know. Until I thought I it was just it. A nurse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was just nurses, but just bloody yeah. Right. yeah. But there's proper yeah, okay, yeah, proper yeah. wardies. Yeah, right. fair. Yeah, I guess bigger hospitals they're pretty crucial anyway. Mm. Imagine just doing that all day though. Like, yeah. Oh, well, there's other jobs. It wouldn't be as busy for you. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you yeah. do have more. Yeah, there jobs was more responsibility. So like, um, when you're an ED ward, you get trained up to do like plastering. So if you get like, you know what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What the trade? The, like plaster walls or plaster no no like plastering like, like, like oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. plastering the hospital yeah nah yeah. like when you, you know when, yeah. you, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you break a bone like and you get like a yeah, cast okay. or something so yeah right you right. go through like a course and you get trained up to do that like that's like the big dog warty if you're an ed warty <laughs> yeah yeah so 
<laughs> obviously they yeah i didn't i didn't really get trained because i wasn't there long enough but yep um it would have been cool to learn how to do all the cast though bro it would have been yeah. unreal yeah so yeah i was there for about a year and a half and then um 2015 so yeah 2014 obviously all of 2014 i was working at the hospital and then mid 2015 I ended up getting a job as a teacher aid at Slaw High School, so at 2015. And um, yeah, you'd only be 19 at the stage. Yeah, I was 19. Yeah. Yep. So I was 19. Um, I sort of knew um, the chappy at the Slaw High School, and they said that they were looking for um, some teacher aids, and I was like, "Yeah, why not?" Because I was sort of getting over the hospital too, which was a bit. You know. <laughs> just was it like the shift work you were getting over, sort of thing? Oh. Or just- Cause yeah, like, yeah. What is the roster like at hospitals? Yeah. Is it like night shift, day yeah. shift? So yeah. you have a day shift, an afternoon shift, a night shift. Okay, pretty much. Yeah. Oh, the shift work wasn't too bad. I guess I was just like they had me doing more security work than warty work. So I did a bit of both, but they always because they needed more security work, and the security work was just sort of boring, bro. Yeah, like you're literally yeah. just locking up rooms, and like you get the occasional emergency, but it was very like, pretty rare at, at Gladstone Hospital, like. To be honest, Glasgow Hospital was pretty quiet. Yeah. So, and I was sort of looking, yeah, just to venture out of that. And so I ended up getting a teacher aid job. So I was working with like a lot of the kids with disabilities at um at the school. Um just like learning support, so just helping yeah. in schooling and stuff. <coughs> um I did that for three years. Um, enjoyed that. And then um twenty nine start of twenty nineteen. So obviously did teacher aiding for three years and then twenty nineteen um, I got a job at Trinity, and that was as a youth worker. I know, like a lot of people get the teacher aid and the youth worker mixed mixed up a bit. So obviously, teacher aid, um, you're obviously assisting the teacher to support students in the in the school with their learning and like with curriculum education. Um, but I guess the diff- the main difference between a youth worker and um, and a teacher aid is youth worker. You're more focused on their social and emotional, like I said before, social emotional well being support. Yep. Um, obviously learning with their education when you're in a school that obviously flows on from that but your main focus is to obviously get the kid get the kid get the student ready socially emotionally mentally so that they can en- engage and so um yep. you know at, at Trinity when I was there for four years I did a lot of PD so I um, did a lot of training like doing programs and stuff so I'd run like youth programs and it was all based around um you know um making better choices it was based around leadership. It was based around trust. It was based around forming groups, um, forming friendships, relationships. So it covered all like sort of aspects of life, sort of thing. And they yeah. were, and the, and the programs are awesome, bro. Like, is a different sort of learning. It wasn't just um, so when you run these programs. Obviously, traditional school, you know, you, a lot of the kids you just sit down, you're doing book work, and it can be quite boring for a lot of students. So this, a lot of the programs that I run are always hands on. They're always um, they call it adventure-based learning. So you're always um, you're doing like hands-on activities. So it could be team-building activities, you know, it could yep. be trust activities, and then you always you have a chat or you reflect on what you've done, and hopefully they can take what they've learned from those programs and those activities, and they can sort of use them in their life um, eventually. You know, yep. um, it's like have you ever been to like school camps and stuff? Yep. Yeah. 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 You know how they do a lot of the, those adventure yep. type yep. base activities, and yeah, so it's sort of that sort of type of um, those type of programs, and I loved it. Eh? Like I enjoyed it. And oh, bro, you'd have to have like amazing patience too, bro. Yeah, because a lot of those <laughs> kids, I can imagine, struggle with focus big yeah. time. Yeah, so no, definitely, and be able to keep them like on work. So like, fuck, yeah. bro, yeah, full yeah. props to yeah, all you boys. Do. I know Raj. Yeah. I know Raj actually has done that work to him, Brizzy. Yeah, you know, so, you know Raj. Yeah, well? I know Raj. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, props to all you boys that do work mm. like that with. You know, your kids have men- mental disabilities and that because yeah. it's not just easy to walk into, like, mm. for sure, bro. Yeah, yeah, it takes a different sort of, um, I guess, brain to be able to have that patience with the, oh, with the kids you're working yeah. with. It shows you have a big heart. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess, yeah. If you enjoy it, it didn't, obviously, I still enjoy it and it didn't really feel like work because you're enjoying it. If you enjoy yep. something, yeah. it doesn't feel like work. Eh? Yep. Did the um, days go quick? Yeah, man. Like, um, obviously, I'm working at a new job now, but I'm still on my weeks off. I'll still do some casual work now and then. Oh, so true. I work there today, and like, yeah, days go super quick, bro. Like, literally just like that. 
Especially because um, it's like what eight hours or you yeah, work a little bit. Eight, eight hour days. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Eight hour days. So um yeah, no, it goes super quick. Yeah. I guess that patience was sort of um like you said, like you have to have a lot of patience, but I never used to be like a patient guy. Like I wasn't just born with patience. Obviously, like with anything, like it was sort of had to sort of adjust to being more patient and like obviously when you're doing work like this, like your patience like is tested like every day. And that's the thing, bro, like Doing work like that, you don't really think of it at the time, but like over time, bro, how much that impacts and can change your life and your personality. Yeah. And then like. also what would help is like the kids would begin to like you. Mm. So then that would just like, I know if I like to teach her, you make you it have easy that bond. on them. Like yeah. You make it easy on them because they're doing their job. They just want you to do this and you yeah. like them. So you just, you know, 100%. you go with the flow. And I would imagine well, you know, the students would have liked you as a teacher yeah. so they would have just been yeah i would yep. have hoped well you think about when you're back in school hey like you if you had a better relationship with a certain teacher like you were going to do work for them hey yeah. like oh, you were going to engage yeah. in their class more so like, definitely listen and pay attention more for sure yeah, as well 100%. For sure. like relationship is like a, probably the the biggest part when working with like young people not just in like a SAS school, but like in mainstream schooling. Like, mm-hmm. if you can have like a good rapport with students, if you can have a good relationship and connection with sh- students, then they're going to engage in your classes better. They're going to engage for you better. They're going to um, obviously succeed in school or in life better. You know, so it all comes down to that that relationship with the kid at, at the end of the day. You know, yeah, yeah for sure. I can I can only imagine that like trying to teach at schools these days is getting so much harder too with social media and yeah. Like, oh, yeah, like pe- so kids do, so. like, well, people in general, but, like, kids as well just have such short time um, attention range. Oh, what's the word? Time span. Time yeah, span. Yeah. Attention span, such yeah. attention attention span. span's real short. And, like, not only that, they got – everyone – they probably all got massive egos too. Watching social media, they see – yeah, I don't know how to, like, really put into words, but what they're viewing and stuff like, oh, I don't have to do this. And yeah. they get this ideology and, like, I can imagine it's just a nightmare for, like yeah. – Especially primary school and yeah, I guess like yeah, big challenges for teachers these days is try and create an engaging lesson because obviously because of social media and technology these days, yeah. there's so much entertainment. So there's you know kids at home they're playing video games, they're yeah. watching YouTube, and um, mm-hmm. they're already like entertained by like just a thing and that's in the palm of their hand. So. Yeah. When they come to school or when you know teachers are trying to create engaging content for for them to learn like kids are finding it hard to engage because it's they think it's boring yeah and obviously back 10 years ago there wasn't all that you know technology around oh, yeah, or it wasn't I've, accessible as often i even know like when we were grade 12 and like or even grade 11 jet was grade 12 like mm. we were still playing basketball like yeah. when we were young we were playing 40 bro they're like all the grade sevens is lunchtime on their laptops yeah <laughs> it's crazy bro it's yeah, yeah. like it's bro insane. go bro. play footy yeah. with the boys like holy yeah. bro so, it's scary man like it is we're in a obviously era where technology is just is literally taking over and like like obviously technology is good and it has yeah. its it's got its ups and its downs but i guess it all comes down to like with anything like balance hey like you've got yeah. a good balance of everything and with your gym side of things bro because that's like what you're what i know you for sure mm. bro like what you're really taking on and yeah what's kind of your passion at the moment is your gym influencer type stuff social yeah. media and all that yeah, yeah. so how that all start bro like a gym journey so when when did you start going to gym um so like i guess training in general has always been part of my life like i come from a big sporting family yep um, for sure being footy, New yeah, union yeah, yeah. Rugby, rugby league that. rugby union my yep. mom was like a silver fern for netball oh, back wow. in her day so she played at a professional level um so yeah sport and that competitive side and training has always been part of my life um growing up um gym probably didn't actually properly start till one year out of school way eh? so i sort of went for year 12 like two days a week and it was just like at the PCYC gym yep. when it first opened it was just Similar like to um Ijaz yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> right well that's like we literally when he first started out is when I first started at Jets as well so when he started at Jets I started at Jets yeah is um, it one year apart or same yeah age? one year apart but yep. he was two grades below me yeah okay school, yeah yep um so yeah went to PCYC just with like the boys it was more of a social aspect you know just um wasn't anything serious and then um one of my best mates, um, Mac Daddy, 
Uh, he lives in <laughs> New Zealand at the moment. But yeah, uh, me and him just started going more regularly, like three to four times a week. Like his mum was a, a rugby coach. So she used to, um, she made like a program and stuff for us. So oh. sort of more, went more regularly, um, 2014, 2015. And obviously, um, yeah, obviously Jim, you know, went pretty hard. Um, gained a bit of strength, you know, beginning gain, so he gained a bit of strength, gained a bit of muscle. But I guess when you're young, I didn't really know what a diet was. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like back yep. in those in those days, I didn't know what a diet was. And even like, what Andy was saying in the previous potty, because he's about 30, mm. 32, 33 now, I think when he started gym, like there was no YouTube and all that. No. Nah. You weren't even had that then either. Like gym wasn't really big on social media or nah. YouTube at like, all. So Yeah, you literally, now you can just scroll through your phone and there's just so much content out there. Oh, it's massive um, now, bro. It's, it's awesome. massive. Oh, it's just so good, yeah. yeah. It was after COVID, bro, that gym just went bro, like, through the yeah. Back. Legit, and um, yeah, obviously when I first started gym, all I knew was just, yeah, just train hard and, um, you know, for footy. Like, that was literally my, why I went to the gym. I just trained hard just to play footy and because it was fun and, you know, if I get my exercise in, then, yeah, I deserve my treats. <laughs> sort of thing, <laughs> and it would have been, like, the basics, like the bench, the squat. Right, legit, so the, basic, man. The shoulder prep, like, literally just yeah. basic stuff you weren't doing. Yeah, bro, and it was yeah. just literally... Obviously, back then, it was just like, you know, try and go hard, heavy. like, go heavy, <laughs> yeah. um, superset everything, you know, yeah. so you get a sweat on, you know, like, so, obviously, I still gained a bit of um, strength and a bit of size back then, um, call, it a, call it a dirty bulk, if you will. <laughs> well, you're not, you're not a short guy, either. Yeah, How tall like, are you? Um, 6'3". Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and, like, growing up, like, I've always been a bit of, like, a on the bigger side, like, a solid, you know, solid boy and, you know, a bit of... Bit of chunk, a bit of chunkiness, <laughs> um, but the big guess, manus, yeah, the big manus, <laughs> eh? Yeah. yeah, but um, it was probably around 20, 2016. So twenty sixteen, I went for a holiday to New Zealand, and um, before New Zealand, I probably weighed about one hundred and thirty kilos. So I was I was pretty heavy already. That's genetics um, too, bro. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Kiwis and like naturally, yeah. And um, I moved. I went to New Zealand for like a month. I came back and I gained like 10 kilos and I was like, I was a big boy, bro. And I didn't, obviously in New Zealand, I didn't really have access to a gym that much. So I didn't really gym in New Zealand. Yeah. And um, came back to Gladstone and I weighed myself and I was like 148 kilos. And I was like, holy Ooh. crap, I've put on some weight, eh? I was like, this is New Zealand gains. <laughs> bro, literally, and the food in New Zealand, like, because when you're on holiday in New Zealand, bro, like literally the food is just, it's literally just island. Like, you were for your family oh, yeah. eating like island food, bro. And like, the, the takeaway over there is just just cha- is a game changer. They got yeah. a shop. Yeah, have you ever heard of Wendy's? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like not not the ice cream Wendy's. Yeah, yeah. The oh. redhead, redhead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like America. America. Yeah, bro. So, oh, bro, I was eating there like once a week when I was in New Zealand, and like I'll just get like there's this burger with the baconator. It was like three <laughs> mince patties, three it was like oh, just bacon and cheese, and bro, I'd have oh, bro. Does it not make your mouth water thinking about it now? Oh, bro, <laughs> it's like one of my favorite. Like places in New Zealand, eh? Yeah. You, if you ever go to New Zealand, you have to try Wendy's. It's it's a, it's gone. It's gone. Fuck, bro. I wish yeah. I could just whack on ten kilos like that. Yeah, bro, <laughs> that's the thing, eh? Hey? Like, yeah. I literally you can just I, I can put on weight so easy. Like, and you know what? It's not all good weight. That's the thing. So, yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah. So I came back, bro, from New Zealand, and I put on like ten kilos, one hundred forty eight kgs. I'm like, yeah, I probably should do something about this. And then probably the the wake up call for me. Um, was when my mate was getting married. One of my best mates was getting married that year, and we went to we went to do um, suit shopping. We went to go try on suits, and I literally could just fit and squeeze into the biggest suit they had. And I was like, "All right, this is the biggest suit they've got." And I'm like, "Man, I'm like just fitting into this." And so that was like sort of the turning point for me. Yep. And then yeah, I, th- I guess that's where the, the proper the gym and the fitness journey sort of started from there. You were just kind of like, "I've got to make it." change yeah like gotta make got a change it, something's good yep. yeah and, and like you guys said like there wasn't much content out there i didn't really know what i was doing most of the time all i knew was i had to follow a program and i just had to eat healthier so yep. pretty much my starting point and everyone's starting point is different but my starting point was i followed the same program that my mate's um, rugby coach uh, my mate's mum, the rugby coach gave me i followed that and then literally pretty much all i ate was just in the mornings i'd have porridge um, at lunch, I'd have like chicken wraps, and then at dinner time, I'd have no carbs. Yep. And I did yep. that for like just protein, bro, just protein. And I did literally, I didn't know what tracking was, I didn't know what calories in, calories out was. All I knew was just I had to eat healthier and I had to eat less. 
So that's what I did. And then for the first six months, I just literally smashed out that diet and that training program. Um, really had any treats. I just literally dieted and focused and trained hard for the majority of it. And I lost like 10 kilos. So I was back where I was, 130 kilos. Um, and then sort of, as I went on my fitness journey, bro, you're always researching things, you know, like you're yeah, always like, trying to look for yeah. what, you know, what's good. Like how can I lose weight? How can I, you know, shred fat? You know, you're always looking for the right information. And, you know, you're always going to come across good information. You're going to cr- going across bad information. But obviously, when you're first starting out, you don't know what's right. You don't know what's wrong. Yep, yep. And there's so many, there's so yep. much information out there even now. Like, obviously, majority of it is awesome, good information. But then there's still some information that people get confused about, you know? Yep. And there's also stuff that works for some body types <coughs> that yep. doesn't work for other body types. And that's what other people don't understand either. 100%. 100%. Yeah, there is massive confusion. And then you do have people that the know-it-alls that think they know what they're doing and rah, 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 and, and are putting out false information out there about dieting and exercises yeah. and just creates this massive confusion for people that are coming into the gym community, starting out, and they are seeing that content, wrong form, technique, which leads to injuries and then yeah. false results. And then that's they true. lose the motivation to go. Yeah. So, yeah. And so that's the trouble... As good as social media is, you can find the real good resources. There's also real bad resources. Mm. And it is making it quite difficult for those with little knowledge. Yeah. So. Yeah, 100%, bro. Because, yeah, obviously, there's just so much information out there. So it's always hard to know what's right for me or what's right for you or what's right for everyone. Like you said, you know, like everyone's different. And um, we've got to find that out for ourselves. And that's what I did on my journey. I just trial, trialed and errored. Literally pretty much a child yeah. and error different things. That's the best way to learn, bro. Yeah. yeah. Yep. 100. And um, so obviously, yeah, during that 2016 year, I lost about 10, 12 kilos. And um, you know what? I wasn't like in a rush or anything. I wasn't be like, no, I've got to lose heaps of weight quickly. I sort of was just, I was, I was getting on with life, but I was just still training hard and I was still trying to eat healthy. You know, and Were you then. still playing footy at this time as well? Yeah, so, so I was like, still playing footy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was um, playing footy for Vals, Valleys, yep. um, under 20s. And that 2016 team, oh, bro, that was like the most gun under 20s team that literally you could ever, <laughs> like, we had so many good players. We, I think because that was Did the first. Eli as well? Yeah, we had yeah, Eli. He would have been playing um, hooker back when he was yeah. in his Capra's form and all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, no, bro, like. Fucked. We had a yeah, we had a gun team. Like it could have been the Gladstone Raiders team, man. Like it was just a really good team. Sam and Smith and all that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, actually, was Sam Smith? I think he played a few games with us. But um, That's when he was like going Cowboys. Yeah. He started yeah, playing yeah. Cowboys and Broncos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when he started sort of entering out to NRL team. So I think he played like a couple games with us, but um no, nah, he wasn't fully committed. You have like Dry Parter and all them yep. as well. Yeah, Dry Parter. Yeah, right. Yep. Yeah, okay. Um, I don't yeah, know if you know Caleb Van Lorick, Dane Richards, all those boys. Yeah, like, yeah that's pretty stacked. Yeah, yeah. All the stack <laughs> team. All the stack team, bro. In under twenties too, when everyone yeah. would have been like peak fitness for yeah. came and, to play. And our coach, his name was Dennis Moore, and um he was like a really good coach. So he was the assistant coach for Manly Seagull. Oh wow. Ooh, and he was out. coaching us, man. So like yeah, our team was <laughs> yeah. was pretty good, bro. Um, we ended up making the major semis, and we lost against because um, it was extended league then. Yeah, and we lost against Japoon Seagulls. Um, it was a pretty close game, but for like a Gladstone team first year going into extended comp against Rocky, because we all know like Rocky standard, like they're pretty good at their yeah. forty eight. Yeah, so we did pretty well, and um, yeah, so that was a really good year for the, the major. You said major semis, major semis. Yeah, so it was the preliminary finals. Oh, okay. So oh, like right. The one eh? So, yep. Game away I from wish Brown. they still yep. did yep. that, eh? Because, okay, like, yep. you go watch the footy now and Gladdy, and it's only, like, I don't know, three teams. Oh, and, man, like, the comp's just so small. Yeah. And, like, oh, you know. do need at least, like, five teams to get a bit of competition going. Because yep. when you're versing the same two weeks, I know one. our boys were, like, they were buzzing to play extended league. And they yeah. were pretty upset. The thing is, was, like, the like, travel. Because you probably do travel with Rocky. And mm. driving your poon, just, like, that extra bit where you're just, like, oh. Yeah, like holy yeah, I man. think that's what scares a lot of the boys off. Yeah, oh, yeah. But even in you know when you live in the bigger cities, like you're traveling, you travel busy, anyway, anyway, and sunny and etc. So it's pretty sure. normal. But yeah, that's what it is, I guess. Just small town things. Yeah. Yep. So you're at uh, um, one thirty. weren't yeah, a, one thirty. weren't in a rush to. Nah, I wasn't in a rush at all. So I was just going with it. You know, training, eating a bit better. Um, that's really good for your mentality too. And yeah. 
just enjoying it, eh? Yeah, pretty yeah. much, man. I was just enjoying the process, and um, um, it was probably around 2017. I was I was weighing around 125 kilos, um, so I dropped like 15 kilos. Was that 15 kilos? Is yeah, that mass? Yeah, yeah, 15. Yeah. I'm gonna mass. But yeah, that's 15 <laughs> kilos all up. So that was like a year and a you know probably like a year and a bit. Lost 15 kilos, and then um, uh, trained. You know, I was feeling really fit. It was probably the fittest I've ever felt. I was the strongest I've ever felt. Um, I was I was looking a lot better, feeling a bit lot better. Yep. And then um, our first trial game, um, when I played, we versed the Capras under twenty threes for a trial match, and I was playing um, A grade. And um, bro, my first run, um, one of the hookers came to the side and clipped my knee, bro, and my <laughs> knee popped out, and I did my ACL. Oh, oh Jet yeah. knows all yeah. too yeah. well about yeah. that. So I didn't know I did my ACL then, but mm -hmm. I just obviously. Yeah, so I, what's I, it I, feel did like? You keep playing? Hey, did I, I try to. Dude, I try to hop, and it gives out. Yeah, pretty much. So yeah. what's it feel like when you do? A, is it like a snap, or is it like what is it? It, it? it feels like you jar it. Have you ever jarred yeah. your knee? Literally feels yeah, like okay. you jar your knee. Yeah. You get up to play the ball, and, and then just, you stand on it, and it just just loose, bro. It's gives like it, something's it just it. loose in there, man, and you yeah. just can't put weight on it. I tried to tape it up, and I was like just <laughs> running in a straight line, and I'm like, yeah, no, nah, I'm good, I'm good. Yep. Taped it up, went back on, bro. First run, I went to just to go step off it, and just gave way on the ground again. I'm like, nah, this is no good. <sighs> so 2017, I did my first big knee injury and I was like, I was pretty gutted, man, because I was feeling good for the season. And like, obviously, as like a young guy coming up, like we all have a dream of trying like crack it in footy. A lot yeah. of us, you know, do try and crack it in professional sport. So I was like pretty keen to sort of give it a crack because I was probably around 20 years old. So I was sort of at that age where, you know, it's like a good time to sort of have a go. And um, yeah, so that was a bit of a, had in the nuts for me, hey, like yeah, doing yeah. my knee and I was feeling, you know, I was performing well, feeling good. <laughs> and then obviously I did my knee injury. Um, but obviously, yeah, when I did my knee injury, I sort of had like, it's 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 fine and it's normal to have a time where you're just like feeling down. Um, I think like a lot of people think, oh, you know, if, if you're feeling down, like, you know, you're just depressed or you're sad. Like it's obviously, it's all right to feel those ways, feel that way sometimes, even us for us blokes, you know, yeah. like, it's all right to feel down and out sometimes and to feel sad because that's where we're human, we're normal. So I was like, it was probably like a week where I was just like down and I didn't really do anything, it wasn't gymming for, you know, I was just sort of like, oh, bro, like, you've been working hard, you know, I've been putting yeah. in that work and then I've gone and done this injury. So I was obviously pretty sad for a bit. I wasn't depressed, but I was like, I was sad, you know, I was yeah. down. And um, but obviously it's important that as people, like we try not, we don't stay in that, that rut of being down, of being sad. Um, because that's just not going to get us anywhere. Um, so I sort of obviously, um, it was sort of, a, it, I took it as motivation, I guess, the injury. And I said to myself, you know what, there's so many people who have injuries and they let themselves go even more. They'll just put on weight, they'll eat, they'll just give up. They'll just put all the weight that they've lost back on. And I was like, you know, I was motivated. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not doing that. So I legit, um, I had surgery booked for like six months later because I didn't have private health. Bro, and you're literally waiting for surgery so long when you're in the public health system. So I had six months, so I had to wait. And until then, um, the doctor said, um, if you can do some prehab, then um, it will help with the healing process after surgery. So I was like, yeah, sweet as. So started going to even just to go to physio then. And I was just smashing out exercises, you know, working the knee. I was literally swimming. I was biking. And I ended up losing like, bro, I ended up losing 10 kilos with one knee. So I was like, Dang. I was weighing around like 120, 118 kilos. So almost like, yeah, another 10 kilos. But I was, yeah, I was, so I even got even lighter, just, you know, just training hard and um, trying to get my knee right. And then obviously had my surgery. And then after surgery, I wasn't too fussed on rushing back into footy because I wanted to make sure it was, you know, it was ready to go. Yep. But um, obviously, so I did my rehab for, for a year. And then I think it was around 20, 2018. So that 2017 was like rehab year. 2017 was just sorting out my knee getting that right, and I ended up losing a bit of weight. Oh, you did lose weight? Yeah, yeah I did nice. lose weight. So um, so that was obviously a new journey for me. Um, Diet-wise, like, I was still doing the same thing. It wasn't anything special. It was just eating a bit healthier, still being in a deficit. I didn't know what deficit it was back then, but, you know, yep. just trying to, you know, do what I was doing. Yep. Um, still kicking, smashing goals. You know, you know in your head, eh, like, yep. when you're in a deficit, like... Pretty much, yeah. You do um, know... 
And I was just tracking my weight. And if the scales was going down, then in my head, I'm like, yeah, well, I must be losing weight. And when you do see those results, it just gives you that that rush. You're like, fuck. Yeah. Right. That adrenaline. You just want to keep, get that, you start getting that discipline and drive going yep. and it just keeps going. Pretty ticking much. Down, so, down. So yeah. And then, um, yeah. So all 2017 was all like, oh, it's a cool year, my rehab year. And so I smashed out my re- re- rehab year. And then um, 2018, I made the decision to, to get back into footy. So about halfway through 2018, I was probably weighing about yeah 118 to 120. Yeah, wow. So, but for you, that's that's, that's fit from 148 yeah. kilos. Like that was probably the fittest I've ever been in my yep. life. Um, that was probably yeah performing wise, and um, yeah, obviously as I went along, I started to learn more about um, what calories were and what 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 different foods were and what was better, what type of training was better for me. Yep, and um. Obviously, because before that, it was just like cardio, do a bit of weights, cardio, do a bit of weights. But I yep. actually learned that there's certain exercises that will help you perform a certain way or there's so, this certain amount of foods that's going to help you um, obviously perform better or, or feel better. And started learning how to um, track my calories. So I started mm-hmm. getting into the whole flexible dieting method. So if you don't know what flexible dieting method is, it's pretty much where you can eat whatever you want, but it's within your certain macronutrient goals and so i started learning about that and um a big probably motivator for me and a big um fitness creator who sort of came up on the scene around 2018 was i don't know if you heard of james smith james smith yeah he's yeah. a uk British. fella bro British i fella. love him bro. fucking love him bro. he's probably like a lot of what i learned and from my fitness journey yeah, was he's, from him man you know him on the tiktok he's the one he's like real like he's brutal. Real straight up. he's straight up like just oh, to the point yeah, yeah. bro like have you read his book, bro? How to be confident? Nah, I haven't. Bro, bro. that's good, yeah. bro. But Proper. he just started putting out just book. content, bro. Just about yeah. you know calories and and um you know calories in, calories out, calorie deficit. And I learned so much from that and from him. Just started watching a whole heap of videos. Started watching a lot more YouTube. And and around 2018, 2019, that's when a lot more fitness content started coming out. Yep. And then um, so I, I actually lost from doing that flexible dieting method. Um, I lost like another five kilos so now i was probably weighing around one 110 yeah probably 110 wow. it will take yep yeah um and yeah so like probably the largest i've ever been in my life um from 148 to 110 um at the start of 2019 like i was feeling good and um yeah i finally learned like sort of i had my own way of um sort of going about my fitness journey and that that flexible dining method literally changed like my whole look at how i can do this whole fitness journey um and then 2020 bro that's when i started getting into the more like like footy was still around but i started getting into more like that that bodybuilding sort of um way of training um so footy was still there but uh like that bodybuilding training was sort of appealing to me eh? yeah yeah. so watching a lot of like youtube and um and all that and um i ended up going under uh, my first coach um for in 2020 mid 2020 and i did like my first like proper sort of obviously i've been cutting like most of the time i was doing it but like i wanted to go under a coach so i went under my first coach i did like a 10 week shred and um i was probably i was weighing around actually i dropped a fair bit of weight then too but yeah after covid actually yeah dropped like another 10 kgs and i was like another five kgs and i was like weighing like 105 and um but i did my first challenge in 2020 and then um I was 105, ended up getting down to 97 kilos, and I my body fat was probably around like 12. percent Holy, yeah, and that, that's, that's the that's, first time I had abs. That's real good yeah, for your genetics, well. bro. bro like, yeah, Kiwi background. It was bro. crazy, and like again, like I learned so much from my coach. Shout out to Tin Beast, but he, <laughs> <laughs> you probably all know him from my stories. But um, bro, I learned so much from him again. So literally every year, I was learning something new. Like every year I was learning something more about how I can implement different things into like my own fitness journey and my own, um, yeah, obviously way of living and trying to like drop weight or build muscle or, or just, you know, fitness and health in, in general, bro. So, yep. um, and yeah. Yeah. hundred, bro. bro that's and that's, insane. then you, when did you start doing your influencer type um, stuff on instagram yeah i guess i when, started and what well, actually what started that what what made you want to do like hey like i actually really enjoy this i want to give this a crack mm. was it watching all the youtube and you just really enjoyed it and could see yourself doing that yeah pretty much i guess like 
obviously I had a journey and people were obviously inspired. I could already see people like, you know, messaging me saying, whoa, that's crazy. Like, like you've done so well. Like, like obviously I've inspired a fair bit of people from my transformation. And so I just started obviously posting my own progress on yep. stuff. Like um, TikTok came about around, you know, that 2020 sort of um, time. 2021 and i just started posting progress videos and posted training videos and like you know some videos of my diet like and um you know people were starting to notice um i ended up getting like i think 480k views on one of my transformation yeah that's the one i've seen yeah. on tiktok that's and i think that's sort of what yeah that's what, what blew it up and i was like oh that's pretty crazy but i guess yeah like i never thought like obviously my journey would ever um, well at the time you know you wouldn't think that your journey would inspire people but i guess it does oh 100 percent, bro like people that hadn't mm. seen you from when you're 148 to 95 you're a completely different person bro yeah yeah like, completely different bro yeah would shock people just be like oh and like just people seeing that bro just make it makes mm. them go like fuck like you know if, if you can do that why can't i like yeah that is like Really, yeah, it's awesome, bro. Yeah, it's inspirational. I, I guess, yeah, like the posting of content, eh? Like, I just did it for fun, like, because I enjoyed it. Like, um, obviously, I love posting like videos of training and videos of you know, of all types of things in life and stuff. But then, I guess, um, like, I think last year, sort of like, gave, I came to realization was like, man, like people can actually benefit from what I post. Um, like people can actually like, be motivated or be inspired from like what I can post and stuff. So like, um. I'd have people message me, be like, "Hey, like, I didn't feel like training today, but like, I'm been seeing your stories, and like, it's made me want to go and tra- out and train, like, you know, like, it's like just stuff like that." And like, literally, I've had people message me, complete strangers that I don't even know, like, just off like, "Hey, bro, like, I seen your TikTok video and your transformation. Uh, I'm just feeling like really inspired, and I just want you to know that I'm on a journey myself, and I've lost about 10 kgs. Like, that's what, like, that's literally, awesome, bro. Yeah. bro. That makes me just so happy that, and it makes me want to keep doing what I'm doing, like, keep posting." you know, you know, like gym journey things or like, you know, my, my progress and my whole lifestyle because if it can like help someone else to like make changes for the better in their life, then bro, that's that's all it takes, you know, that's all makes it all worth it, you know? hundred bro. Yeah. And what I love like oh what what I think thinks fuck today is like you can just go if you're say people who are overweight, they can just go get surgery, get all the weight cut mm. off, do these ridiculous diets, but they haven't earned that yeah like for someone like you who's put in the hard yards done the diet got that discipline and it's just your daily routine that's yeah you you earn that way but the people who just do those surgeries a lot of them just put it straight back on because they don't have the discipline Mm. or the dieting yeah like those disciplines in place i guess so for and then when but i feel like for a lot of people that see people like um see yeah people like you your journey they go like it's just like kind of wake up call like man i've got to like do something for myself man mm. like to see it in like I, what what he has done like, you know why can't i do that kind of take yeah. the same steps so yep. yeah bro 100 percent. what i really love about you bro is like how consistent you are bro mm. it's hard to be consistent like posting stories every yeah. day videos everything bro so like it's just only gonna be one day bro and the algorithm's just gonna click for you bro you're just yep. gonna blow up man it's just yeah. coming for you bro yeah Fingers crossed, but yeah, like, obviously, yeah, that's what that's, you can do. And that's bro, and that's because manifestations, manifestations but yeah, bro, yeah. if you enjoy the journey, if you enjoy the journey, you're gonna enjoy them. The guys, just like looking at the destination, mm. if that made sense in a way, I don't know how to put it, but like, yeah, yeah, I guess, like, yeah, at the end of the day, <clears throat> obviously, I love the whole content creating aspect because I enjoy it, but I guess, like, my mindset is if I focus on the content creating because I want to get followers or I want to get views. That's not rewarding for me. Yeah, What's yeah. rewarding for me is if I can post content, if it like, if, if, if one person or two people is going to find value out of that, then bro, that's all that matters. Bro. That That's like, that's my whole reason why. So yeah. obviously if the followers and the views come, that's cool. Like that's a bonus. But like if people can like change their whole lifestyle because well, they saw one of my videos, bro, then that's, that's right that's i've succeeded better i've yeah. succeeded eh? so that's my whole like mindset towards the whole posting and um content respect bro that's yep. that's wholesome as fuck <laughs> yeah hundred <laughs> yeah bro well fuck, best of your future bro because like honestly man there's very very few people and 
But what a lot of people don't understand is like for you now, it's like real, you're used to it. Like you do it every mm. day. It's like you, it is your routine, but like filming and doing content like that, it's really hard to set out, step out of that comfort zone and do that because you're always thinking like what other people are thinking, like yeah. oh, what what they think. Like when you are filming yourself, like oh, that person's probably thinking yeah X Y Z and all this bullshit. So for you to be able to just go out there every day, not care, and do it for those, mm. you know, for the people around you who actually inspired by you, bro. Yeah, yeah. awesome, bro. Awesome. Nah, that's good. I um heard this quote on TikTok from this. I don't know who she was, but it was pretty wholesome. Um, she said, like, you posting your content isn't for your friends or for your family. It's for the people who find value in it. And I, like, realised, like, well, yeah, that's, like, that's true. Like, hit me right here. I'm like, that's true. Like, obviously, it's cool if your friends and family, like, get value out of it. But you're not posting for, like, them. You're posting for people who, like, are going to find value out of what you post or what you, you know, what content that you create. I was like, that's true because, obviously you're going to get people who be like, oh, why is he posting this? Why is he posting that? You know, that's just, you know, he's always posting this stuff, but they're not finding value in it, but there's always going to be someone who does. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, you said there, bro, literally like, what, like a lot of people just don't understand, but mm. those same people just aren't doing anything in their lives and they're mm. not inspiring yeah. no one. And yeah. They're here, the one, they're pointing the fingers like they're so perfect when they're doing jack shit. Like then they're, just, they're just comfortable. Like yeah, hide, yeah. they're hiding someone else like who's, going out of the way to help others and they're all like oh fucking because it makes them feel good like yeah. Oh, yeah. Fucking, it's easy it, yeah it's, it's easy and that's why i love what you guys are doing here right like with the whole <coughs> manifestation podcast i reckon it's awesome because i feel like especially in gladstone like i'm not hating on gladstone like gladstone's home and it, you know it's been home for the last 11 years but i feel like you know everyone is very narrow-minded not everyone but a lot of people are narrow-minded here future manifestations bro where you see yourself next Five to ten years. Five, ten years. Oh, geez. It's a long time away. How old would I be? Like 37. Nah, I don't have a missus or anything. Pretty single at the moment. Unless. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> uh, um, five, ten years. So I guess um, like this, even looking at this year, right, like I've, fitness has always been um, like a big priority for me. Um, it's always been like up there in the top three and it still is obviously a, a priority but it's sort of taken like this year it's sort of taken a step back so um, I've sort of rearranged my priorities a bit and um, I guess these next five years um, obviously I've, I've gone into industry and um, I've taken a new line of work so I'm sort of just looking to save some money and um, obviously, um, obviously I want to sort of look after my family but also I'd love to go travel eh? just to oh, go bro. visit different countries in the world like it's just been on my mind and my heart for ages i just want to go explore different places have you gone anywhere by new just zealand? new zealand yeah, yeah. <laughs> i've just new zealand and australia like so i've just I'm like i want to save some money and i want to go explore different parts of the world because there's so much you know the world has to offer and i've only known all little glads that would be awesome zealand. for you too because yeah. you do put up all your content like you'd be able to Holy like Europe, bro. Yeah, it'd be awesome, bro. To see. Thrive, yeah. Being in like Europe, Canada, like yeah, any of them, you'd thrive. Yeah, and I don't have any place in particular I'd want to go. Like Europe's always been up there. You go see oh, bro. all of Europe, and um, so yeah, that's probably in those next five years, even ten years. I'd love to just go travel. Um, whether that's by myself, I'll be happy with that. But if I find you know a group or someone, then even better. But yeah, I just would love to go. And um and travel the world, eh? Like it's just something that's always been on my mind. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Some people want to, and some people don't. Like, I just don't know. Like, it's hard to explain. But some people are happy just settling down and just living the default. Yeah, oh, bro. That blows my mind, man. Because the world's like fucking beautiful, man. Like, there's oh. some crazy places out there, bro. Yeah. Like, I even like even how different Europe is to Australia. Because I've been checking Italy, bro. Like. In a fucking church, bro, built in the 12th century. Like, Australia wasn't found in yeah. 500 nah. years later, bro. Australia was nothing, man. So, like, being in a t church that's literally 500 years older than where we live today, bro. Like, it's such a mind flip, bro. Even yeah. that, like, eye-open experience when Lockie and I, we were driving back from Abud. Oh, well, we weren't driving. We were on the mopeds. And we are going back from Abud. 
and it was like just unreal we were going through rice fields through all these tiny <laughs> villages <laughs> and yeah, we were bro. just like we wish we had a gopro just strapped to our helmet and oh. just like was looking yeah. at everything because it yep. was unreal sight but yeah, yeah just yeah. be such good experience man like oh. and a lot of arrogant people out there should travel like asia and and even Europe, bro, like, and just a lot of be ungrateful, grateful. Ungrateful. Yeah, people. the ungrateful ones. And yeah. just understand yeah. how like, fortunate you are to be in, in, you know, Australia and Western mm. civilised countries. Yeah. Sure, bro, because, like, they have it so much – they have so much less than us, but they uh, they tend to be a lot happier, and happier yeah. than us anyway because they don't have the phones and all this yeah. shit distracting them. So Just open your eyes up, I guess, eh? Hey? Like, yeah, bro. It's just so much. Yeah, 100%, bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Fuck. Pull the pin there, bro. Cheers for coming, bro. That was awesome, potty, bro. Awesome. That was unreal. Hundred percent, like having you, boys. you know, when there's people that come to my mind and do the potty, like it's a no-brainer to have someone like you here. So inspirational as well. Yeah, done bro. heaps with your life. I mm. didn't even know you had been around that much, like mm. to like all <laughs> like even WA. Yeah. That's insane. Like yeah. yeah, bro. Yeah, definitely been around Australia for sure. Anyway. Yeah. You've, tra- you've seen it. more of Australia than I. Well, I've yeah. seen more of Australia than New Zealand. Right, cheers to that. Cheers, Thank guys. You Thank you. Manifest Podcast.